Okay, so we have talked about precipitation reactions. That's one type of reaction that takes place commonly in aqueous solution. We're ready to get to the next one, and this is acid-base reactions. We're going to look at acid-base reactions and um, reactions that give off a gas that are also acid-base reactions in this section. Okay, so let's look at first a neutralization reaction. In a neutralization reaction, an acid base is reacting together and it's producing products of a salt and water. Now, a salt is really defined by this reaction. It's an ionic compound where the cation of that ionic compound is not H plus and the anion of that ionic compound is no, not OH minus, otherwise it'd be an acid and a base. Okay, so you're generating a salt by, again, doing a partner swap. It is a partner swap, but instead of forming a precipitate, you're forming water. And let's see some examples here in a little bit. Okay, so here is a review of what we talked about in Chapter 3, what an acid is. An acid is a substance that when you dissolve it in water, produces H plus ions. Okay, so it'll have H plus ions in aqueous solution. The base we did not define. A base is a substance when you put it in water, generates OH minus ions in solution. So that's our definition of acids and bases. And when you put those together with each other, you're going to end up doing this neutralization reaction. Now this over here on the left hand side of the screen tells us that this is the erroneous definition of an acid and a base. Acids and bases can be defined by three common ways. The Arrhenius definition, a Bronsted-Lowry definition, sometimes just called a Bronsted definition, and a Lewis definition. We won't focus on those other two definitions this semester. Okay, we will hold off and talk about those definitions much later. So for now, that's the way we're going to define those. So let's look at examples, okay? HCl is an example of a Arrhenius acid. When you dissolve it in water, it breaks apart into these ions. The H plus we call a proton, okay? It's not like um, when we say the word proton, we're thinking of nuclear particles, and that's what it really is. It's a proton because a hydrogen cation, you just removed the one electron it had, and that's all you have behind, okay? Um, if an, a proton is floating around in water, though, it won't stay separate from the water molecule. It will actually attach to the water molecule, which we can see depicted here. The H plus will find the electrons on the oxygen and attach to that, okay? When you see H3O plus, that's called the hydronium ion, H3O plus. So that top reaction we see on this page is more often written or can often be written, I don't know if it's more often or not, by the way I've written it down here. I am much more likely to write it by the second method, okay? Because HCl is being placed in water, the water molecules are right there, and the H plus is going to attach to that water molecule to give me the hydronium ion. So there are two different ways of writing this reaction of what happens when you put HCl in water. Both of them are just fine ways of writing that, no problem. So um, that Cl minus is kind of hanging out up there by itself. Now it's being joined by everything else. When you put HCl in water, one of the H's will attach to the water, making the hydronium. The other one is just the Cl minus floating around um, in that solution aqueously. Um, the term polyprotic acid means you've got an acid that has more than one ionizable, meaning in more than one proton that can be donated to the water. So an example of a polyprotic acid would be sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid has two, and those ionizable hydrogens, meaning donatable to water hydrogens, or allowed to let go of the ion H pluses, are always written at the beginning. So we see that this has two of them. So this is representing losing one, and then that HSO4 could also donate or let go of another proton and so we can look at it as a stepwise process. It doesn't let go of both of them at once, it'll let go of one and then what's formed can then let go of the second proton and donate that second proton. Here on the right are the exact same reactions 
but I'm including the water molecule and I've lost the plus on the end of that. But here we have the two ways of writing that where you're actually including the water and showing the H being placed onto the water to give us the H3O plus as a product. A little bit about bases. The most common kind of base that you're going to run across this semester are called metal hydroxides. Metal hydroxides are bases because when you dissolve them in water, they do what ionic compounds do. They break apart into ions. So this is not called a salt, but it is an ionic compound that breaks apart into those ions. Here are your common bases, and these are what we call strong bases. These are your common ones that you'll see most frequently. Not because all metal hydroxides aren't bases, it's just that most of them aren't very soluble. So these are the ones that meet the criteria of our solubility rules of being soluble in water and therefore are good bases. Okay, so that's what this says. These are the soluble hydroxides according to those rules. And I've already told you that they are strong. Now, this is a common base that you will see this semester. It is NH3, and it is also a base. But at first glance, you can't see how it would fit the definition. How, when this is dissolved in water, are you going to produce OH minus ions? Well, the way this happens is actually the water gives the proton to the NH3. And when the water gives the proton to the NH3, it's going to make NH4 plus this cation. But what are we left the water becomes? Well, if you took an H plus off of this, this is what you get. So in that roundabout way, we are producing OH minus ions in solution when we dissolve ammonia in there. And uh, so you need to be aware that it doesn't have to have the OH sitting on it with a metal to be a base. And just add to your knowledge that not only are metal hydroxides bases, which we see here as your common ones, but for now, just add this one to your list as well. That is a, a base. We call this a weak base, okay? What that means is it's a weak electrolyte. You've learned about electrolytes and you've learned about strong versus weak electrolytes. This doesn't completely 100% go to products and that makes it a weak base. Okay, so now we've defined acids, we've defined bases, we're ready to look at our neutralization reactions, which is putting these acids and bases together and making salt plus water. Okay, we've already defined that neutralization reaction. So, what's a salt? A salt is an ionic compound, but the cation can't be H+, plus because that would make it an acid. And the anion can't be OH-, minus because that would make it a base, but also add to that not only OH minus, but um, O2 minus as well. So here would be the generic way of writing that acid plus base gives you salt plus water. So we should be able to write the molecular equation, which we see here. We should be able to write the complete ionic equation and we should be able to write the net ionic equation. In order to write a good equation we have to figure out the salt. Okay, and in this, in this uh, image here we see where the salt comes from. You take the cation from the base and the anion from the acid. You look at those charges because they will have a charged you got to make a good neutral compound and that gives you the salt that gets formed from that. So let's see if we can figure out what the ionic compound or the salt that would be formed here. I want you to pause and try it yourself. Now before you pause, remember you take the cation from the base and the anion from the acid, look at the charges and see if you can come up with a good formula. Okay. So you're back with me. Let's see what you wrote. Here are HNO3 and BaOH2. What you should have written as your salt is BaNO3-2. Did you add that too? Make sure you did, and we'll talk about why that would be. Plus H2O would be the other product, okay? 
Now, why did it have to be a 2? If we look at this, there's a couple things we can do. We can look at the periodic table, and we can know that barium has a plus 2 charge because it's in the 2A family. If we forget that and we remember that hydroxide is minus 1 and there are two of them, that also tells me that that has a plus 2 charge. We look at the NO3. Now, on the list of polyatomic ions, we had to memorize it had a minus 1 charge. But if we forgot that, we know that the H is an H plus, so that means that the rest of this has got to be a minus 1. So that's kind of a check for ourselves. Well, if NO3 is a minus 1 and barium is a plus 2, wouldn't you have to have two of those nitrates to come up with one of those bariums? Okay, now is our equation balanced as we're seeing it? No, because there's two nitrates and this was only one nitrate. So we have to put a two here. Now I have two nitrates. Now is it balanced? No. Now where did my water come from? I said this was a proton, I mean a partner swap. The barium got together with the nitrate and that formed me this. The H is getting together with the OH to make water because water is HOH, right? HOH, that gives me water. So the H is coming from the acid. I have two H's. I have two OH's, so that is going to make me two waters. So there is the balanced equation for that reaction. I needed to know that before I could ever write the rest of the reaction and balance it. Uh, this is a molecular equation. Let's talk about the ionic and net ionic equation for this reaction. These are aqueous, AQ, AQ. This is soluble. It too is AQ. This is not aqueous. You don't say that water is aqueous. What you say is water is a liquid. Now everything that's AQ you can break apart into ions. So I have this thing that can break apart into its ions. I have two of the H's, so it's Make sure I don't go too far over there. 2H plus aqueous. I have two NO3 minuses that are aqueous. I have one of the barium 2 plus. That's aqueous. I have two of the OH minuses. That's aqueous. Okay? Now this is still soluble, so it's aqueous. So I do barium 2 plus aqueous. I have two of the nitrates, that's aqueous, and what else do I have? I have two waters, okay, and that's a liquid. So this is the molecular equation, again a misnomer, but we're writing them as combined units. This is the ionic equation, and it's the complete ionic equation because I'm showing all ions present. And what do we, can we do from there? We can write the net ionic equation. So we go through and we cancel out those two. No, we don't. Don't do that. <laughs> Sorry. How about we cancel out these two, 2NO minus, 2NO3 minuses and 2NO3 minuses? two barium two pluses and two barium two pluses. And what do we see remaining? Well, we didn't really cross that out. We ignored that. We'll say that we have two H pluses, aqueous, plus two OH minuses, aqueous. And that's producing two waters, liquid. Okay, since it's not aqueous, we don't break it apart into ions. Now, is that a good equation, well, it's kind of double what it should be. We can go through and cut everything in half. And so we generally would write it as H plus plus OH minus gives me H2O liquid. And this is the net ionic equation of an acid-base reaction where the acid is a strong acid and the base is a strong base, this will always be the net ionic equation for it.